Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Saving Sunderland. Now in today's episode we will of course review our summer transfer activity and we have a game against Southampton and the Community Shield. So there has been a lot of business done over the summer in terms of both incomings and outgoings but there is still a few days left of the transfer window and there is still some things that I want to do and complete before it finishes but you'll get the basic idea here of what has happened. So we sold Reese Nelson to Chelsea for £60 million. Of course he was one of our English lads and he played excellently for us when he did play. But he was in the final year of his deal. He wasn't interested in talking about a new contract. So I decided to cash in now before we lost out completely. And Don Bellier was in much the same position as Reese Nelson. He was in the final year of his deal. So we managed to sell him to Barcelona for £50 million, I believe. Yeah it was £50 million. I thought it was a good bit of business. We got him on a free a few years ago. He has got down the pecking order. And we have, of course, got plenty of youngsters who, if not beat him for stats, will eventually. So I was happy to cash in on him there. I'm going to quickly go over some of these other ones. I'm not going to go through them too much because they're generally under 23s people who you'll never have seen apart from when we signed them. Cesar Vrem, Ian Vobo, Scott Manson, Gelson, Rod Turner, Fran Rubio all left the club. Uh, the potential either wasn't there or they were in the final year of the deal and I didn't fancy giving them another one so I decided to cash in on them there. Two players who I'm absolutely devastated to lose, Kai Roberto and Marcus Aurelio, who couldn't get them down to new contracts due to work permit issues. This is Kai Roberto, he's an absolute monster. He's ended up going back to Brazil and he is somebody who I say actually signing in the future. You know, He would have been promoted to the first team squad had he stayed this season but unfortunately he's went on a free. And Marcos Aurelio is another one, absolute fantastic striker. Red Bull Leipzig have got himself a brilliant player for free. We'll probably never say this guy again as just he's, he's worth too much and he's too good. And as you can see here, I have started doing something that I should have been doing a long time ago. A lot of our better younger players who are not in the first team squad, I'm loaning them out for fees now. So as you can see, a lot of them are now on for 250 grand per month. Wages fully paid for. Um, and a couple more down here for other bits and bobs. But yeah, starting to make some money through the loan system now. So we'll quickly go through some of the ins. Roman Velasquez, he is signed from Deportivo Cali. He is listed for loan. To be honest with you, he's good enough for the first team. But just uh, the how the players have fell and how our squad is shaping up. He's probably not going to make it this year. Next year though, definitely. Isaac Iwusu was a bit of a punt from Bayer Leverkusen. They signed him, I think it was in February or March time and he has joined the club now i think it was about 875 grand he's not going to be good enough for our first team squad but i'll try get him long game time out see if that could help him improve 1.2 million got us a japanese striker koto segahira he's went on loan to roma he is one of the ones that we're getting fees for he looks like a fantastic player and the fact that he's japanese is brilliant i like the fact that from a, a an unusual country shall we say but yeah brought him in for a very cheap fee he's already made his fee back because of his loan deal to Roma, so happy days. Zacharias Ramirez signed for, I believe it was £1.8 million. He signed from Colo Colo, he's a Chilean, he is a senior international. He has got loan offers in, so he will be going out on loan this season. I'll need a good couple of years of development from him before he could even entertain and join in the first team squad. Sonny Megind from uh, FC Copenhagen, a Danish international left winger. He is one of the ones that's went out on loan for a fee to AC Milan. He looks like a fantastic left winger, excellent pace. He's a bit raw in his technicals, but that'll come with time. So maybe next season, but if not, it will keep milking him for the loan fees. 2.9 million goes to Irvin Gutierrez. This is another one who has signed during like the March April period. He is an American. He has signed for two point nine million from Portland in the MLS. And yeah, just a, a young raw winger with plenty of potential. We'll try and get him long game time. If not just leaving him in the under twenty threes because he's at his current ability right now probably isn't good enough to attract a good team who's got good training facilities. So I might just keep him here for the time being. Emmanuel Keita, four point eight million signing a goalkeeper from Gijon. He's went out on loan to Lazio for the season. He just looks like a solid keeper. He's got plenty of potential. 34 caps for Ivory Coast. So hopefully we'll see him come to the squad at some point. 6.75 million goes Jotam Godino from Chivas. An absolutely fantastic striker. He's another one who's went out on loan for the fees. He will be an absolute beast. 
once he develops. Dmitry Anandjev for 22.5 million. This guy is going straight into the first team squad. He is a left winger, but he is either footed as well, so he could play inside forward should we decide to change tactic. But yeah, he just looks like a very, very well-rounded left-sided midfielder, so he will certainly get some game time. This is John Gablot. We'll sign him for 22.5 million. He's an absolutely fantastic centre-back option to have on the bench. There was a reason why I signed him. And the reason isn't entirely clear right now. Ruben Diaz is in the final year of his contract. He's not interested in signing again. We did have a £53 million fee agreed with Barcelona, but he couldn't agree contractual terms. So I signed this guy expecting Ruben Diaz to leave. He hasn't left, so now we've got three absolutely excellent centre-backs on the bench. But I would prefer to... Uh, I would prefer to move Ruben Diaz on before the start of the season. Twenty-four and a half million goes Abdelou Slawi from Genk. Look at this guy. I think this guy, maybe with one or two years loan development, will be absolutely fantastic and probably be our first choice striker. Twenty-two and a half million. Twenty-four and a half million. Twenty-four and a half million. He's went out on Freiburg, as you can see, two and a half million pound loan fee paid. Just an excellent, excellent, excellent young striker. Essaid Marku from Lazio was our marquee signing for the season, 62 million. Another Italian right winger. Now, obviously, when Vignato got injured at the back end of last season, we only had Jaden Sancho and Reese Nelson as our other options on the right hand side. Now, I think with this guy, we've got a, we've got two real quality right wingers. Obviously, his physicals are just stupid, but he still has a lot of room to grow. So I'm expecting big jumps in his mental and technical stats. Over the coming season. He will get game time. He's not first choice by any means. But he will get plenty of game time as we rotate. So as we pick our first 11 for the first game of the season. We will of course start with Jordan Pickford in goal. Matty Rios, Oscar Pfeiffer and Josier Luis will be our three centre-backs of choice this season. Rickson will be our right wing-back of choice. I believe he's just got the bit more potential than Althan So. I think I'm settled now. I think Rickson's going to be my first choice. The only reason why Althans was getting in more often is because he's natural at that right wing back role. But hopefully with more game time, Rickson will get there himself. Milagres, of course, will be our left wing back. Esparza and Phil Fodden will be our central midfielders. Vignato on the right. Luis Enrique Aranz on the left. And Lincoln up top. Now, I did bring Tobias Vanest, our Belgian striker, into the first team squad expecting them to steer in the first team squad and be one of our players for this season but I was expecting bids to come in for either Lincoln or Sugo and I would have entertained them I would have sold them for good money hopefully but nobody's came in for them I'm not in the business of transfer list and first team players to try and get them moves so Tobias Finest's going to go out alone same situation with all the others he's got all loan offers from Schalke and Napoli will get two and a half million pounds in for the loan so hopefully next season might be his season. So on the bench, we're going to have Christian Nievas as our centre-back option. We'll have Kieran Tierney and Althans as our wing-back options. We'll get Zaheer on the bench. We will have Marco and Dimitri Anandjev on the bench as well. And we will also start with Sugo on the bench. So as you can see, he does leave a lot of players there who are pretty much squad players. Jaden Sancho now is going to be like our backup to our backup wingers now. Gwen Doozy is our backup central midfielder. Ruben Diaz will hopefully not be here at the start of the season. Patrick Haller, our backup goalkeeper. Jal Risson, I wanted to get him into the first team squad, but there's just not a spot for him. So again, I'm trying to get him loan, loan game time out. I'm not interested in selling him just now. Same with Wozniak, trying to get him loan game time out as well. Actually, we're going to change Nievas. We're going to get Jonga Blout as our uh, centre back option on the bench. Actually, just looking at some of these uh, conditioning now, I'm going to get Sahir on for Phil Fodden, and I'm going to get Phil Fodden off the bench as well, and I'll get Jaden Sancho on the bench for and whatever his name is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to change this before we start. So his nicknames, his name is Dimitri Ananjev, so I'm going to call him Dimitri Anan. So he will be Anan for the foreseeable future. So yeah, without further ado, we'll get into the match. We've got Southampton. They must have won the FA Cup last season so hopefully a good performance from the boys and we'll get our first trophy of the season so we'll kick off against Southampton first game of our season shooting from right to left Lincoln's been set away by Rios in the first highlight of the game he's in the box takes the strike but he couldn't get it on target so now obviously we've I haven't really addressed the disappointments from last season losing in the Champions League final to Manchester City 
Again, we'll hope to be there or thereabouts come the end of the season. Zahia puts it in the back of the net to make a 1-0 Sunderland. But yeah, I'm trying to brush under the carpet. We'll start it again. We've made some good signings, I believe, and particularly in the winger positions, we've brought in some good backups. And hopefully that'll see us going good for the rest of the season. Anyway, let's focus on the game now. Southampton have a corner. Kucho gets his head on it, but he can't get it on target. Another highlight now down the left-hand side for us. It's switched to Vignato on the right-hand side. We all know he's got the pace to beat these man down this right-hand side. Can he get the ball in? But Strakosha can claim. Big kick up from Strakosha, and they do bring it down. But Pfeiffer manages to intercept a, a, a pass. <coughs> Lincoln now is up top. He's beat his man. Can he get the ball in? He can Oh, excellent, excellent composure by the boys. Just playing it about in the box. Manages to fall to Zaheer for his second goal of the game. As you can see here, Lincoln beats his man. And he gets the ball in back post. And then it's just some absolutely excellent composure. Arans to Esparza to Zaheer. First time football. Excellent goal. 2-0. Lincoln now down this left-hand side. He's got the beating of his man. He finds Arans in the box. Who takes the strike. And he hits the bar. Another highlight now, Jordan Pickford with the goal kick. Vignato's got on the right-hand side now. Vignato switches the play to Aranz in the box. He takes a strike, but Strakosha with another good save. Another highlight now, Luis Enrique Aranz on this left-hand side. Plays a good through ball for Lincoln. Can he get a? Can he find somebody? No, he literally tries to run through Strakosha to get to the back of the net, but it's unsuccessful. Oh, Donis is through for Southampton here. I was paying no attention whatsoever, but he hits the bar. Jensen now for Southampton to Banks to Griffiths. Up top, Donis now. He cuts inside. kucho has got in the box. But Pickford manages a good save. The highlights are coming thick and fast now. And Southampton have the ball high up the pitch. But we manage to intercept and set Vignato away down this right-hand side. He finds Lincoln inside. Zahir's through. And that's going to be a penalty. Please say Zahir's going to take it. He is. Hopefully to get his hat-trick goal. We'll certainly see now. He steps up. And he puts it in the back of the net. As you can see here, Zahir steps up. The keeper goes the right way, gets very close, but not close enough. And that's it for half-time. I'm not too sure about the substitution rules in the Community Shield. Can I make as many as I want? I would like to. So, new boys, who have we got? Marco, he can get himself on for Vignato. Jean Gablot, we're going to have to change his name and I'll get him on for Oscar Pfeiffer. We brought on Kieran Tini and Michael Adfans as well. There's our four substitutes. I'm sure we can make more, actually, can we? Yeah, we'll bring on Sugo as well for Lincoln. We've got a couple of substitutes remaining. Just in case of injuries. Vignato now. The substitutions haven't happened yet. He gets the ball in. But it's clear by Southampton. Is this highlight going to be over yet? No. Griffiths is now through for Southampton. But Pickford stands up well. Gets the save in. Corner for Southampton. It's played in. And they head just over. Marco's picked himself up. And not a gashed up a leg. Unfortunately I don't have the kind of guy to bring on for in his place. But hopefully he can say out the match okay. Griffiths now to Cucho on this right hand side. He's got some space if he can beat his man. Jose Luis cuts it out. And Luis Enrique Rans can break with Sugo. Can he make something happen here? He goes down this left hand side. Zahir's got, got himself in the box. It falls to Zahir, but it comes back to Barkley and they can clear up. The highlight continues with Taney on this left hand side. Luis Enrique Rans now. He's got down the outside of his man. Gets the ball back post. Marco can't get there. But Esparza can keep the ball alive to him. Rans to Sugo. That makes it four. Another assist for Lewis Emery Rans. Brilliant stuff. As we can see here, Marco tries to get his head on that, but he was a bit unfortunate. It falls to Esparza, who gets the cross in, and Lewis Emery Rans heads down for Sugo to make it 4 0. Zahir managed to dispossess the Southampton play and get it to Sugo, but it's cut out by Southampton's defence. Donis now on the ball. They've got some interesting options inside the box, but they cannot find them. Can we get a clear? Rios clears, but only as far as Lucasen. Banks now to Donis on this left-hand side. Come on, boys. Get a, get a challenge in. Clark into the box. Zahir clears. Sugo, get moving, will you? Barkley now takes the strike and it goes over. We're going to get um, Marco off for Jaden Sancho, and we're going to make the final change. We'll get Esparza off for Gwenduzi. Apparently we can't make any some more substitutions. So apparently the limit six. Another highlight now. Luis Enrique Rans tries to play it over the top for Sergo, but it comes to Jaden Sancho. He beats his man. He can get the ball in the box. Rans is there, but it's cleared. Zahia now on this left hand side for Taney. He's beat his man. Can he get the ball in? He turns back on himself and he gets tackled by Lucasen. And now Southampton can definitely break. Griffiths has it now. He plays it out wide to Lucasen on the right hand side. Barkley's there. He plays it back to Cucho. Excellent player. By Ross Barkley. It actually comes back to Juan Hernandez. Who is Cucho. Never mind. Griffiths finds Lucasen on his right hand side. The ball's played in. Ross Barkley brings it down brilliantly. 
plenty of composure there from the lad and he plays it back to Hernandez to make it 4-1. So here now with the corner, he plays it in. Sue goes there. I wasn't expecting anything from that, but it was a free kick from Zahir and Sugo gets his head to it. As we can see, a great delivery in from Zahir and Sugo rises highest to beat the keeper at the far post. 5-1 Sunderland. Zahir with another free kick in a similar position. He gets the ball in again. It's cleared by Southampton this time, but only as far as Zahir. Can he get the ball back in? He can. Jose Luis is there. That's the 83rd minute. That makes it 6-1. How are boys? I've got stuff to do. <laughs> Zahir with the ball in. It's cleared by... Is that Jensen? I was cleared by Jensen. Zahir gets the ball back in though on this left-hand side. And Jose Luis is there at the front post to make it 6-1. Two minutes remain. Sugo's got it now to Sancho, to Althans. Can we build something on this right-hand side? But Sugo kind of get there before Lucasen. Barkley now. Enzo Cabrera is on the pitch for Southampton. We'll welcome him back with open arms. Pickford to Luis Enrique Arantz to Zahir. There's the ball through for Sugo here. If we can beat Lucasen, he hasn't got the pace to do it this time. But Esparza finds Arantz in the box to Sugo. He should be burying that. That was great play as well. I don't think I've had a match with more highlights in it than this one. Kucho now on this right-hand side to Jensen. Plays it to Cabrera. Finds Montano on it on this right-hand side. Can he get the ball in? He can. But it's not going to be anything good. Pickford with a big kick. There's only 20 seconds remaining. You would think this is going to be the end of the match. And not really a highlight. But we'll we'll steer with it. Sancho on this right hand side. Can he get the ball in? Comes to Zahir. Back to Esparza. Referee just blow the bloody whistle. And that's it. Full time. 6-1. We've won the Community Shield again. Obviously it's not exactly a prestigious trophy. But... It's always nice to get your first win in the first game of the season, even if it is in the Community Shield. Unfortunately, a two-week injury for our new Italian right winger, Marco. That's a bit disappointing, but Zahir, man of the match performance. He played absolutely excellently in uh, Phil Fodden's usual role. He has developed quite well. He's not the quite the player I thought he would be, if I'm honest with you. In terms of his attributes, he hasn't exploded, so to say, but we'll wait and see what happens with that. So looking forward to next episode, it will be the first game of the Champions League. The draw hasn't been done yet. I believe it's done around the Manchester United-Liverpool game. So we'll find out who we'll play then and then we'll start with that. And I think I'll, I'll fast forward through to the final Champions League group game in the episode after. So we'll have a lot of fixtures to talk about. But I am going to accelerate the first half of this season, as I usually do, because... The first half of the season is always just sort of figuring out what sort of position you're going to be in, how good your team is... But we'll, uh, so we'll, we'll do that and then we'll see what happens down the line. So a comfortable opening win against Southampton. Nice to get the first trophy of the season in the cabinet. If you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you enjoy my content, why not get yourself subscribed? But until next time, take it easy.